now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, in Battersea Park, that rather dreary winter morning, there was a rehearsal in progress. A placard read, Izzy Pound and his incredible marching sound. Izzy Pound was a one-man band. The placard was very definite. It said, rehearsal on, no visitors, keep out. Izzy Pound was trying out his instruments. They were strapped all over his person. Across the opposite side of the fairground, near to the rifle range, was a man known as Sergeant Blackie. He paused, looked across at Izzy Pound's rehearsal, and casually brought a rifle to his shoulder. Izzy! Izzy Pound! I want to talk to you, Izzy! John Steed shouted, but his voice was lost in the cacophony of sound. Stop! So almost was the rifle shot. Izzy Pound stopped his tuning up and collapsed to the ground. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 2 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel try to help a very bewildered mother in... A Case of Interrogation. The young army lieutenant, Roy Casper, was missing from his home. No one knew where he was or why he had left without reporting. Casper was one of the youngest and most responsible agents in military intelligence... He was known as a link man in charge of negotiations with paid informers. Link men stayed in touch with their headquarters every day, and the very fact that Casper had not reported was a sign that all was not well. Mother had got Emma Peel to search Casper's apartment, but there was nothing to be gained from this except to notice that several things were missing, articles of clothing and shaving stuff that indicated that Casper had gone away as though on holiday. Then a body had been found, the body of a man called Wilson, one of Casper's informers. It looked as though Casper must have betrayed him. Mother put Steed onto another of Casper's men, Izzy Pound, the one-man band. Steed rushed across the fairground, but Izzy was lying in a heap, his instruments scattered around his body. Izzy? Izzy Pound? Oh. Oh. No, no, take, oh. take, take it easy, Izzy, take it easy. I'll soon get you out of here. Just, just tuning up. Trying out my inst- instruments. Nothing, nothing wrong in him, right, is there? No, no, of course not. No. Just relax. Did you see who shot at you? No. No, the, there's a rifle range over there, but, but the guns aren't intended to kill. Let me have a look at you. Shot, shot between my symbols. A cruel fate. You'll be all right. Oh. Well, tell me, Izzy, when did you last see Roy Casper? Never. I, I, I never heard, heard of him. There's no need to cover up, as you know. This is important. Wilson is dead. Killed at archery practice. There's been a leakage. All undercover agents are in danger, and the one person who's responsible must be Roy Casper. Now, tell me honestly, do you know where he is? No. No. I, I haven't seen him for two days. I was to meet him. When? Where? This afternoon. In a bar. A green pheasant auction. Right. No, I've got to get you away from here into a place where they can't get at you. Now, don't worry. I'll see you're all right. But Izzy Pound shook his head slowly. He knew better. Mother was frustrated. He wheeled himself up and down in his new headquarters, picking up phones and barking into them. There had been no news for several hours, and Mother was never a patient man. Mother... Mother, Steed here. Uh, at last. What have you to report? Bad news. They got Izzy Pound. What? No, it's just too late. Pound and his incredible marching sound are no more. 
It looks to me as though they got at Casper, found out all they wanted to know, and finished him also. Right. Get over to Casper's apartment, pick up Mrs. Peel, and report back here. Right. It seems that everything leads to a dead end. Or a dead man. And in Casper's apartment, John Steed and Emma Peel were surrounded by the forensic mob. I must say that when Mother said he'd send the forensic mob here, I thought he was speaking metaphorically. But look at them. Yes, mob is rather appropriate. Well, what do they hope to achieve? I mean, so many of them. They're just getting in each other's way. I think that's all, men. Take yourself back to the labs and let's have a full report in double quick time. Well, I've got all the shots I want. And no more fingerprints in this. All right, yeah, break all right. it up there. Get going. I'll get you out this time. We overlook nothing, Mr. Steve. Um, how about the ashtray on the window ledge? Roy Casper was, uh, that, uh, is, is a non-smoker. Now, what's this? Now, this cigarette stub is a hand-rolled, custom-made mixture of Virginian Turkish tobaccos and mm, has preponderance of oriental herbs. Uh, smoked by... A right-handed man of average build. <laughs> Safe guess. A preponderance of oriental herbs, eh? Well, of course, that's just in the nature of a wild guess at the moment. I'll be able to confirm my findings when we get back to the laboratory. But the oriental herbs are there. Sure of that. What do you think, Steed? I think Casper had the wrong kind of visitor. Thanks, Norton. Well, thank you, Mr. Steed. Mrs. Peel. Bye for now. Oriental? We need more than a cigarette stub to answer that, Mrs. Peel. A lot more. And so far, we haven't the slightest clue as to Casper's whereabouts. He might be anywhere, if he's still alive. I think we must presume that Casper is dead. Well, it is the most logical assumption. And yet... Yes, Mrs. Peel. Yet I've got a strange feeling he isn't. Well, at least we haven't found his body... Casper only had two pieces of information of any real value to the enemy. And both of those pieces are now dead. Precisely. So Casper has outlived his usefulness to them. Whoever them might be. Absolutely. Dangerous to deal in absolutes. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, what happened to Casper? Was he grabbed or did he go voluntarily? What happened in that apartment of his? What, what happened to make him pack shirts, razor, toothbrush and, and disappear? I mean, if he was grabbed, this wouldn't have happened. There was no signs of a struggle. So we must assume that he went of his own accord. And you were hoping he was going to come back of his own accord. I think that's highly unlikely, Steed. The point is, where do we go from here? Well, Steed? Oh, that's easy. Uh, let me take you to luncheon, Mrs. Peel, at the Green Pheasant in Oxen. Ready? <laughs> What do you hope to find here, Steve? Well, this was the rendezvous between Casper and Izzy Pound. They had a date here about now. Pound can't keep the appointment for obvious reasons, but maybe... You're an optimist, I must say. Mother's right, Steve. Casper only had two contacts. Now they're both gone, what point could anyone have in keeping Casper alive? I don't know. Not a beer? Mm -mm, no, thanks. I've had enough. I've almost had enough of this case, too, if there is a case. Oh, there is, all right. And there's something to be said for being an optimist after all. Uh, look who's just come in. Roy Casper. A rather bewildered Roy Casper was taken firmly by the shoulder and propelled outside before he could even order himself a drink. Steed and Mrs. Peel were in no mood for talk. Having got Casper back, they took him straight to Mother. All right, Casper, let's go through it again. I've told you everything a dozen times. Nevertheless, we'd like to hear it again. Now, you took a few days off. Yes. Without informing the department. No. I, I mean, yes. I, I mean, I didn't think. Oh, come, Casper. You've been out of training school six years now. You know the rules. I didn't think. To think is the first rule to learn. I wasn't on any special assignment. I took a few days off, took my car and toured around. Where? We want names and places, Casper. Where did you go? The South Coast. Where on the South Coast? Everywhere. Anywhere. I, I stayed at pubs most of the time. Names and places. We want to help you, Casper. I toured around, that's all. Just toured. And what about your head? Plaster on your forehead. To knock your head on a low beam in one of those pubs. Nasty. And uh, nasty bruises you've got on your neck, too. I... 
I fell down. Where? Names, places. I, I, I can't remember. You're confusing me. On the contrary, Casper, you are confusing us. Right. Let's go over it all again. Uh, just a moment, Steve. Give him a few moments to collect his senses. Uh, <laughs> perhaps you'd uh, care for a drink, eh, Casper? Buck you up a bit, eh? <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Uh, Fancy interrogation techniques are all very well, but personally, I think there's nothing makes a man crack faster. Not a crashing hangover. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Mother. Oh, Mrs. Peel, may I pour you a drink uh, also? Thank you, Steve. Mrs. Peel, Casper trained with a chap named Minnow. Very close friends. Might be able to help us break him. Go and fetch him. Minnow? Charles Minnow. A sprat to catch a mackerel and a minnow to catch... Well, who knows? Leave it to me. <laughs> But by the time Mrs. Peel had traced Charles Minnow's address and driven over to his home, it was quite late. Too late, because as she rang the bell, Colonel Mannering looked at Minnow. Expecting someone, Minnow? No, Colonel Mannering. You wouldn't lie to us, would you, Minnow? I promise you, I, I'm expecting no one. Then get rid of whoever it is. We'll leave by the back stairs. Get your things, a suitcase, change of clothes, shaving gear, toothbrush. Then let's get going, Minnow. Now! Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen. <laughs> <laughs> 